Hi, everyone. It's Dan Boss from Rails Member Engagement Manager again. Uh, so I'm going to talk very briefly about networking and email lists here. Uh, this is our final presentation of the day, so I will try to keep this short. But I want to just remind you that Rails is a really big place. Uh, in Illinois, we serve uh, around 1,300 libraries. And our service area stretches across 27,000 square miles which includes uh, around 50 counties in Northern and Western Illinois. Now membership with uh, Rails at, for schools is at the district level, uh, but actually school districts are our largest group of members. There are over 50 school districts and that includes pri private uh, schools, which are their own district um, in, in Rails. So, you know, because of our size, we have a really great network. Uh, it's easy to find another school libraries that is doing a very similar thing to what you are doing. And, you know, I know that a lot of you use IELT to kind of connect with other libraries and I fully endorse that. Uh, but I also want to just let you know that, you know, Rails has things to offer as well. Uh, and you can get resources through Rails uh, that, that are pretty useful in terms of connecting you with other libraries. Okay, so let's take a look. So the first thing I'm gonna mention here, yeah, there we go, is networking groups. So uh, I just kind of want to define what a networking group is from the Rails perspective. So Rails networking group is any group that meets semi-regularly to talk about issues in libraries. Uh, and all of our, uh, all of our uh, networking groups are independently run. And we currently work with around 90 networking groups. Some of them are based around a region. Some of them are based around topics like circulation or reference, that sort of thing. Some of them are based around in interest area. Like for example, we have a data and uh, we also have a marketing uh, networking. So typically they meet, you know, monthly, quarterly, possibly twice a year. Uh, the only real requirement that we have from Rails perspective is that it's composed of 75% staff from, a, from Rails member library. Uh, so, you know, I do want to note, note that uh, IELTS chapters uh, totally meet these requirements, most of them. And if you participate on IELTS and you want to add your group to our uh, networking group directory, that is great. Um, you know, we offer our networking groups a ton of benefits. As I mentioned, uh, you can have a listing in our directory. Uh, you can also put your events in the L2 calendar. Um, and we do offer Zoom license and email hosting. I'll talk a little bit more about the email hosting in a second. Uh, but one thing I want to note is that, uh, you know, the IELTS EMIS, for, for example, which a lot of you participate in, I'm sure out there, is actually hosted by Rails. Uh, and we also host uh, email lists for other organizations, um, IACRL, which is the Illinois Association for College and Research Libraries. Uh, we host their list. Um, we also offer grants, which I talked about in, a, in another session. So check that out. Uh, these are all the great benefits that we offer for our network groups. Uh, actually, before I do this, I'm going to jump out real quickly. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to do another share of my screen to show you kind of how uh, one might set up a network group. So if you come to the Rails website and you look under members uh, and, and you put click networking group directory, uh, you'll see uh, all of our networking groups in there. Um, and if you wanted to add a group, you just click add network group, put in a title, put in a brief description. You got to choose one of these categories. You could choose more than one. Um, you might want to put type. So for example, school, you might want to put geographic area. If that's something that is in the definition of your group, when you meet, how often you meet, um, you know, any way that people will contact you or get in touch with each other. Um, and then you do need to put a contact in there, but it's really easy. If I just put my name, Dan Bostrom, it's going to show up and anybody in L2 will show up that way as well. So anybody with an L2 account can set this up. I uh, just come down to click save and then uh, it's, it'll, it'll filter right back into the directory. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, there are 90, about 90 groups in here, uh, right in there. So that's just how you'd set up a networking group uh, if you have a group of people that meets regularly. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go back to the presentation and let me pull it up here. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, so the next section that we're going to talk about here is email lists. Uh, and so, you know, we, uh, these are a great place to find inspiration. Uh, Rails offers uh, around 40 different public email lists. And I'll kind of talk a little bit about what that means in terms of uh, the difference between public and private. But uh, they are organized, public lists are organized uh, around type, um, job slash topic and region. So for example, we have four type specific email lists and those are public, academic, school, and special. Uh, you could subscribe to any of those and all of those. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that uh, a little bit later. Uh, 
And we also have uh, these job topic specific ones. Uh, those are also open. And then the final one we have is the region specific ones. And those that get used far less frequently than the other two. But these are, again, a great place to connect with other people. Um, I know that a lot of you, again, are, are probably already subscribed to the IL email list, which, which again is great. But if you're looking for ideas outside of the school library arena, um, these are great, great places to look. Um, and, you know, I, I, I do want to cover this just briefly is uh, we do create private email lists. Um, I try to separate the public and the private. So, for example, you know, the public email list, anybody can have an L2 account to subscribe. Um, messages are automatically archived, and I'll show you how to access those. Um, with the private ones, subscribers, there must be like an admin. It's a person you choose from your group, um, but they approve and reject anyone that tries to sub sub uh, subscribe. And also, the archives are only available uh, within the groups, so only available for the people that subscribe um, in that group. Um, so I just want to mention a few of the public email lists that you might want to subscribe to, and these are, uh, again, on the Rails website. Um, so that school's email list, this is actually separate from the, the IL list. Um, a lot of times when I'm posting uh, information of, that's about school libraries or for school libraries, uh, I will first post that IL email list and then I'll post to the Rails schools library list. Um, we've also actually been approached about creating a separate um, high school librarians list. And I think that's something that we'll, we will be creating later, uh, later in the year. We're, right now we're going through a, a website migration and we're actually moving to a new email list provider. Um, and so some of this will change. Brian, Brian, my colleague Brian is probably shaking his head right now. Uh, but, but some of this will change uh, and, and I apologize for that, but it's worth knowing about right now. Again, a couple other ones and I put the subscribers in there. We have an equity, diversity, and inclusion list that has over 700 subscribers. Great place to find uh, recommendations on EDI programming or doing a collection audit or something like that. Um, young adult list would be great for you high school librarians. Uh, youth services would be great for some of those elementary folks out there. Okay, uh, let's show you how to, how to subscribe to these. Again, I'm gonna stop sharing uh, and I'm going to share my screen and take you directly back to the Rails website. So uh, if you come to the member section, it's just under email lists. Uh, so I mentioned, uh, you know, here are all of the lists that we have, the type, the job uh, topic specific ones, and then the regional list. So for example, if I wanted to look at the archives, I could click on browse archives and it would just take me to the most recent posts, which is really nice. Um, so uh, actually I posted about this event. Um, so the, that's kind of where to find the archives. If you want to subscribe, if you want to add email lists, come right here to my email lists, and you're going to see a, a link right there that says change your subscriptions or join additional lists. So I want to do this. So I want to click on this. Uh, this is going to take me to a whole list of all alphabetically all the email lists that Rails has to offer, and there are a lot. Um, so it's it's uh, it's a little, might be a little overwhelming. Take it one at a time, I would say. Uh, but but you're going to be able to toggle. So, okay, so for example, I want to subscribe. Let's say I want to subscribe to that equity, diversity, inclusion list. Yep, here here it is. EDI. It's EDI at list.railslibraries.info. So I would click. I would toggle on subscribe. I've already subscribed on there, and uh, I would come all the way to the bottom, and I would click save. And once I do that. I will be subscribed, my information will be in there, I'll be able to post whenever I want, and I'll be able to see all the messages that come in through the inbox. Um, again, you know, the youth services, young adult, same thing, you would click on those and you would click subscribe and then you would click save down at the end. Uh, last thing I'll mention is you can also access, you do need to be logged in to access this. Um, you can access this from your profile. So if you came in here and clicked my email lists, it would take you to that same my email list section right there. So that's how you subscribe. That's how you be part of a little, a little bit more part of the Rails network. I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for attending today. I really appreciate it. Uh, have a great afternoon.